Well, good morning and welcome to Emmanuel. My name is Tab Monroe. I'm the pastor here. Emmanuel is a thoughtful and inclusive, a creative and an engaged community. And we're so glad that you could join us here for this virtual worship. This is Pentecost Sunday, Sunday when we celebrate uh, the gift of God's spirit and uh, really the birth of the church. So we're glad that you could join us here this morning. Uh, some new guidelines have come out recently from Governor Inslee regarding church gatherings. So some of you may have seen those. Uh, just want to let you know that we're going to continue on as we are, are doing here for at least the next couple of weeks. But uh, myself and uh, staff and um, the session and leaders of the church here will be uh, discussing um, some of those um, recommendations and, and possibilities and We'll be communicating out to the rest of the congregation about what our plan and kind of timeline looks like. So with that, um, I'm going to allow some of our teens uh, here at the church. I sure miss seeing the kids and the, the teenagers um, to invite us uh, uh, into worship with a short litany for Pentecost. May we each know the spirit of God within us. May we know it in the quiet and in the busy. May we know it in what is good and what is hard. May we know it in what grounds us and in what gives us wings. May we know it in our listening and our speaking. Come, Holy Spirit, come. Good morning and welcome to Emmanuel Presbyterian Church. I'm Dr. Cindy Caldwell and I'll be your liturgist today. And I just want to share my grief and hope that you will join with me in honoring a man who is dead for no good reason, another black man that has been taken down in a senseless and cruel manner, as well as the grief we have around the 100,000 lost to the coronavirus. Many of those lives lost were senseless as well. So I offer this poem from Jen Richardson to help us all put voice to the grief that we feel. Blessing for the brokenhearted. Let us agree for now that we will not say the breaking makes us stronger or that it is better to have this pain than to have done without this love. Let us promise we will not tell ourselves time will heal the wound when every day our waking opens it anew. Perhaps for now it can be enough to simply marvel at the mystery of how a heart so broken can go on beating as if it were made for precisely this as if it knows the only cure for love is more of it, as if it sees the heart's sole remedy for breaking is to love still, as if it trusts that its own persistent pulse is the rhythm of a blessing we cannot begin to fathom, but will save us nonetheless. Pentecost. Holy Spirit, presence of God, holy breath, life divine, holy wind, mover and shaker. We throw open our hearts before you. 
we cast down every barrier to freedom. We yield to your boundless nature. We welcome your wildness. For too long we have tried to tame the wind. Too long have we sought to control what's wild. Too long we have stood in dominion over the earth. At this moment of earth's great groaning, yearning as if in labor to birth what is holy and enduring, come, breathe, blow, move upon us all. That earth and all that's in it may thrive. That earth and all that's in it may love. That earth and all that's in it may live in the harmony and wholeness you desire for us and all creation. Come, great spirit, breathe. Blow, move upon us here. Now, may it be so. reading from the Bible is Numbers 11, 24 through 30. So Moses went out and told the people the words of the Lord, and he gathered 70 elders of the people and placed them all around the tent. Then the Lord came down in the cloud and spoke to him and took some of the spirit that was on him and put it on the 70 elders. And when the spirit rested upon them, they prophesied, but they did not do so again. Two men remained in the camp, one named Eldad and the other Medad, and the Spirit rested on them. They were among those registered, but they had not gone out to the tent, and so they prophesied in the camp. And a young man ran and told Moses, Eldad and Medad are prophesying in the camp. And Joshua, son of Nun, the assistant of Moses, one of his chosen men, said, My Lord Moses, stop them. But Moses said to him, Are you jealous for my sake? Would that all the Lord's people were prophets, and that the Lord would put his spirit on them. And Moses and the elders of Israel returned to the camp. For the word of God in scripture, for the word of God among us, for the word of God within us, thanks be to God. Our second reading this morning comes from the book of Acts, chapter 2, verses 1 through 21. A very uh, familiar uh, reading on Pentecost Sunday. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven there came a sound like a rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as of fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem at the time. And at this sound, the crowd gathered and was bewildered because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, 
are not all of these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native language? Parthians and Medes and Elamites and residents of Mesopotamia and Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and other parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs. In our own languages, we hear them speaking about God's deeds and power. And all were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, what does this mean? But others just sneered and said, they are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them and said, Men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let us be known to you and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk, as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what has been spoke, spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. And your sons and daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women in those days, I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show portents in the heaven above, and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness, and the moon to blood, before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. For the word of God in scripture, for the word of God among us, for the word of God within us. Thanks be to God. Letter from a Birmingham Jail by Martin Luther King Jr. I must confess that over the last few years, I have been gravely disappointed with the white moderate. I have almost reached the regrettable conclusion that the Negro's greatest stumbling block in his stride toward freedom is not the white citizen's counselor or the Ku Klux Klanner, but the white moderate, who is more devoted to order than to justice, who prefers a negative peace, which is the absence of tension, to a positive peace, which is the presence of justice, who constantly says, I agree with you in the goal you seek, but I cannot agree with your methods of direct action. May God bless us all. 
Well, friends, uh, it is indeed Pentecost Sunday, and uh, this Sunday culminates the the uh, series that we've been doing um, called The Church Evolving, Sorting It All Out. So this week we're talking about the church as, as spirit and uh, what that calls us to. Uh, as we transition out of Pentecost, we'll be kind of moving into ordinary time and just be going back to to doing the lectionary and trying to engage the, the text with what's going on in our community and our world. So, uh, but we hope that you've uh, enjoyed this little exploration of thinking about the, the church and what that looks like. We uh, celebrate and acknowledge on this Sunday, Pentecost Sunday, that gift of God spirit, of the divine spirit, which is really the engine of the church, the the juice, the fuel that propels us into the life and action that we're called to. Cindy read us a text from the book of Numbers. Um, Moses and the people during that time, they had created a lot of processes, uh, a lot of ways that things were done. The, the tent in the story, the tent of meeting was one of those. And in the story, God's spirit rested on many um who were around that tent and they began to prophesy, it says. But then there were these two other uh, people that were left out. They weren't at the tent. Uh, and I don't know why, perhaps they were not well regarded enough. Um, and yet, uh, in a way that was not following the rules or it was different than what had happened before, but the spirit fell on them as well in a different way and in a different place. And they begin to prophesy in camp. And this sort of upset some of the folks around Moses. They um, were concerned. They wanted to stop them. But Moses says, are you jealous? Um, are you jealous for me, for my sake? Would that all the Lord's people were prophets and that the Lord would put his spirit upon them? Basically, he's saying, you know, let them be. The spirit will do what the spirit will do. We don't have to control it. She moves in mysterious ways. There isn't one way. It isn't a competition. And from the book of Acts, I read from the account of that first Pentecost, that um, day that we really celebrate um, today in the life of the church, where a, a group of people, the, the, the disciples were gathered all together in one place. Um, and as they were together, God's spirit was, was poured out via wind and fire are the images that were given and they begin to speak and often when we read this text we we don't pay enough attention to all that were gathered right the disciples but then all these other people that were gathered and if we know our history we know how remarkable even that gathering would have been that those that were gathered were not natural kin um, or alliances they were in fact the very opposite and we also tend to key on the, the speaking that begins to happen. We see the gift of the Spirit um, as the ability to speak in other languages or, or tongues. But really the, the remarkable thing about this text is what others heard, um, how each person heard them speak in their mother tongue, not the language they held in common, not the language of just Jews or Galileans, but their own language. The gift of the Spirit is not so much just in speaking, but it's in the listening and the hearing. It's the ability to, to speak and to hear in a way that allows us to communicate uh, through boundaries. The Spirit meets each of us in the way that we need to be met. In the story, uh, it says that, that some thought they were just drunk, right? But Peter says, ah, it's only nine o'clock in the morning, although I've definitely seen people drunk at nine o'clock in the morning. But, uh, but they were thought of as drunk that they were thought of as maybe being a, a little off, right? And we often think of such things. We often dismiss the spirit because of the vehicle that it may arrive within. Sometimes that, that means of the spirit makes us uncomfortable or we don't always understand it. We want the spirit to come in a way that we're comfortable with, to not ask something new of us, but to have it affirm what we're already comfortable with. And sometimes the spirit does come to comfort and to affirm. And sometimes the spirit comes to refine as fire and to blow us like wind to a place we haven't yet had the courage to go. And in that story, Peter stands up and talks about this, this gift that's been given. He connects it to a prophecy that many of them would have known from the book of Joel. With this gift, God's spirit 
um, is poured out on all flesh, right? On all men and women, slave or free. It says that daughters will prophesy and young men will see visions and old men will dream dreams. The spirit is the engine for the church, for our prophetic voice, for our vision to be activated, for our dreams to be realized. And our faith um, historically is grounded in a, a Trinitarian framework, the divine known as God the Creator, or Father or Mother, if you like, God known as Jesus, or sister or brother or friend, if you like, God known in, in and through humanity as we know it through Jesus, and finally, God known as Spirit. And we've talked a bit about queer theology during this series, and um, in the Trinitarian framework of queer theology, God is the one who sends forth radical love in and through all of creation. And then Jesus and his journey is about the recovery of radical love that we so often reject. And then the Spirit is about helping us return to the radical love that we came from and were created for. The Holy Spirit's literal meaning is, um, or the word that we uh, translate into Holy Spirit is paraclete or parakletos, which is translated to um, advocate or helper is what it means. That is um, the, the word um, spirit um, is to advocate to and for us, to help us um, fulfill that experience of radical love and return to it to be the engines that lead us to embody that spirit by making advocates and helpers of us, standing for and bearing witness to the radical love, calling us back into it. So that the spirit is our advocate, our helper, and calls us to advocate and to help others see and return to that radical love. And here's the thing, you know, we're all different. The way we're met by the spirit, the way we experience it, what she leads us to can be vast and different. Your path and my path are not exactly the same. We certainly share some things in common, but our journey of finding God and healing um, and how we experience that looks a little different for each of us. And still we share that story because something about it can resonate with someone else. It can approximate their story in some way. And that way we become a, an advocate and a helper fueled by the spirit to help others see and return to radical love. I have myself and through other stories encountered um, the divine spirit in many ways. I've encountered many prophets and heard many a prophetic word. I've seen my own visions and have encountered others visions which have driven beautiful things to come to fruition and sometimes have uh, in misguided ways created tragic things. I've have my dreams. Um, I've heard the dreams of others. I've seen some of them come true and others remain at a distance. But as church people, I believe that is our calling um, by the spirit to be prophets. And I'm as uncomfortable with that as you may be. But the truth is there are many kinds of prophets and there are many ways to be prophetic. We're called to have a prophetic voice that confronts and affirms whatever may be called for in that moment. And that is the work of the spirit. And we're called to have visions and dreams that we're pursuing, an image of a full return to radical love that we're trying to co-create with others. And when I think of the prophets of old, like Isaiah or Amos or Micah, I remember that the signs and wonders for them kind of felt like an afterthought. Their incessant, incessant concern was for the vulnerable in the community. They spoke of restoration and justice and peace. They called out economic exploitation, violence and tribalism. And they did it all with a poetic and compelling voice. Painting a picture with their words to read them feels like seeing a vision or dreaming a dream sometimes. And what the spirit energizes us to do, I believe, is, is the same, uh, is to free people from the experiences of, of debt and shame and slavery and oppression and violence, everything that dehumanizes us. And I think we are called to be prophets in our own ways. 
and it has way less to do with than than with just speaking all the time although there will always come a time when we must share that prophetic voice it starts with watching and listening and paying attention the spirit calls us to that work before she calls us to speak i believe barbara kings oliver says it this way the very least you can do in your life is to figure out what you hope for and the most you can do with your life is to live inside that hope not admire it at a distance but live right in it under its very roof and i believe that is the work of the spirit to help us articulate our hope and then to live inside that hope under its very own roof one of the things i hope for is a world where no one yes but particularly where black men no longer lose their lives at the hands of the police and violent racist people on that subject i'm done listening i've watched and seen enough listening to the excuses and the circumstances the yeah but and the all lives matter i'm done with that i'm done seeing killers exonerated or hiding behind badges and bureaucracy their job is to protect your job their job is to put their lives on the line for those they're keeping safe including george floyd and too many other too many other damn names it is enough. It was enough a long time ago. It shouldn't even be a question. You see, the spirit uh, sometimes isn't about just those comforting moments. And that is part of the spirit's work, those beautiful moments of encountering God's mercy and grace and presence. But this morning in particular, in the light of George Floyd's tragic death, this is what the spirit is calling us to. I've lent my voice to this topic before. I will lend it again. And I'm not the genesis of this prophetic voice, but I add mine to the voices already present in hopes that I make it just a little bit louder. And I hope that you'll add yours as you can as well. You heard Dr. King's words to the white moderate. I think they ring true for the white liberal or conservative or, or whatever we may be. It is the same challenge why we can't wait any longer, why we shouldn't have had to wait this long. It is unimaginably sad to me that this even is a prophetic word, but it is for some. That there are some we have to convince that there is a different way, that George Floyd and every black man or woman or child is holy, is God's child, is sanctified, is a human life the most precious of gifts. That nothing nothing deserves that kind of death and cruelty that we see watch that video i dare you to watch it if you can stomach it and say anything to me but that that was murder hate fueled violence the worst of humanity i dare you tell me about the circumstances or how it's not black and white i'm done listening and you should be too on this it is time to speak as brothers and sisters gather and continue to gather around this Pentecost Sunday to demand justice for George Floyd and so many others, I pray for the spirit of fire and wind to refine it all, to bring and blow in change, to take people where they don't want to go so they can see the evil for what it is, to open our eyes by shining and burning bright. I pray that the spirit brings comfort to George Floyd's family and friends, to every black man and woman who lives in fear of this very thing happening to them or their loved one. I pray as it comforts, it also ignites, fuels what has been and will be a long fight for justice and decency. But the truth is that spirit has already fueled the black community because that hope is that house they live in every day and they fight to hold on to that hope even though it's deferred over and over again but that hope is their survival their lifeline they don't have the privilege to have another hope before it but we do 
we do and so we have to put down that privilege and and i ask you to make that your hope as well a hope that you live and breathe in daily and however you can in in your way with your voice i ask us to be prophetic to join the prophets of old and calling out that which needs to be called out to have a vision for a different world for your brothers and sisters of color to work for them to build that world with them to build that world friends our community is full of the spirit and i love that the invitation uh, of the spirit is that we would continue to find our prophetic voice that we would have a vision and dream for our church and for our city and for our world to make it more better to make it more whole to be about recovering and returning to the radical love we were all created in and for. Come, Holy Spirit, with fire and wind. Breathe on us. Refine us. Give us the courage to go where we need to go. Comfort and affirm all that's good. And help us to stand with all that isn't to speak out for a better world. Amen. joys and concerns. Alan Harvey's daughter, Heather Harvey, is deeply thankful to Emmanuel for their support over the last four years through the Virginia Ward Scholarship. She graduated in March from the University of Washington with a computer science degree and after a successful internship last summer is now a full-time software engineer at the tech company GitHub. GitHub. She also still has and absolutely loves the prayer plant she was gifted with at the beginning of this journey. Prayers for Johnny Celine, who is back on quarantine in her room at Brookdale after a visit last week to a doctor for a new pesky ailment. Please hold Johnny in your hearts and prayers as life is pretty difficult and exhausting for her right now. Prayers also for our longtime members, Tony and Georgia Sedgwick. Despite some medical concerns they are trying to navigate in these difficult COVID-19 times, they both continue to be upbeat and never seem to get discouraged. And we again pray for Steph and Carla Schlecht. Steph continues to be under in-home hospice care and Carla is his full-time caregiver. May they receive strength and courage in these difficult days. And a poem of Pentecost around our joys and concerns. Blessing that undoes us. On the day you are wearing your certainty like a cloak and your sureness goes before you like a shield or like a sword. May the sound of God's name spill from your lips as you have never heard it before. May your knowing be undone. May mystery confound your understanding. May the divine rain down in strange syllables, yet with an ancient familiarity. 
a knowing born in the blood, the ear, the tongue, bringing the clarity that comes not in stone or in steel, but in fire, in flame. May there come one searing word, enough to bear you to the bone, enough to set your heart ablaze, enough to make you whole again. Let us pray. Gracious God, comforter, one who knows and sees us, we lift up our joy is this morning, the things that um, the things we're feeling good about, the things that have brought light and life. And we thank you for those that have been shared and those we hold in our hearts. We also lift up our concerns for those we love, for our world and community, not the least of which is George Floyd and his family and friends and those fighting for justice on that front and so many others that have experienced that pain and tragedy. Help them feel our prayers, but not just our prayers, our actions and our prophetic voice. Let them hear us. Give us the courage to speak. We lift up all our other concerns and the things that we've heard and those that are in our hearts. And we ask for hope and healing and peace and comfort in the midst of all of that. We thank you for those working on the front lines, our decision makers, and those who are continuing to help navigate us through this time. Pray that you'd give them wisdom and courage and humility. Pray that uh, help us all do what we must do for the common good and give us wisdom in that. Thank you for the gifts that we've received this week and we will receive, take them to continue to do the good work that we're called to in this place to bring hope and healing and love in our community and worldwide. And thank you for your spirit. Come, Holy Spirit. Challenge us when we need to be challenged. Comfort us when we need to be comforted. Refine us, change us, give us courage, be the fuel of our faith and our life. We pray. Announcements. Just a reminder that we will have a congregational meeting at 1130 today. So if you're watching this in real time at 1030, just jump right onto the Zoom from the website ipctacoma.org and join us for our congregational meeting. Um, our adult nurture gatherings will continue this summer. We felt like they have just been so sacred and needed that we're going to continue. So we have some lovely things coming up Sunday mornings as well as a new travel log. Uh, pilgrimage from home uh, series that we're starting for Tuesday evenings. So I look to see you all there and it is always a joy to see your faces. Well friends, uh, thank you for joining us this morning. Uh, happy Pentecost. It is always good to be together however it is that we can be together. As part of our commission and blessing I share this poem, a uh, favorite of mine by Cheslos Milos uh, called Vini Creator. Come, Holy Spirit, bending or not bending the grasses, appearing or not above our heads in a tongue of flame. At hay harvest or when they plow in the orchards or when snow covers crippled firs in the Sierra Nevadas. I am only a man. I need visible signs. I tire easily building the stairway of abstraction Many a times I asked you, you know it well, that the statue in the church lifts its hands only once just for me. But I, but I understand that signs must be human. Therefore, call one person, anyone where on earth, not me, for after all, I have some decency. And allow me, when I look at him, to marvel at you. Unique Creator by Cheslos Milos. Friends, uh, let us all uh, 
join in that prayer that the spirit would come however she will come that we would have eyes to see it and that we would join her in her prophetic voice in her vision in her dream that she would fuel us to see mostly in one another that the spirit is at work that you are alive God bless us and keep us God help us to know your grace spirit give us life give us fuel give us fire for the work ahead and all God's people said together amen <laughs>